Today we are looking at a T-shaped section of a beam with a shear force of 100 uh, kilonewtons that is subjected to a shear force of 100 kilonewtons and we are expected to sketch its shear stress distribution diagram. Now, for us to be able to plot the shear stress distribution diagram, uh, we are going to begin with locating the neutral axis on this T-beam section. And for us to locate the neutral, the position of the neutral axis, uh, first of all, we are going to apply uh, to use this table. It's a table that have a component. The T-beam have got two components. We have the flange and we have the web as well. So we divide the section into two parts. The center of gravity of the flange is at that point, its center. And we saw how you can locate the center of gravity of a rectangular section by joining its diagonals. And where they meet, that becomes the center of gravity of that particular rectangular section. For the web, this is the center of gravity of the web. Now, the component, we have rectangle 1, whose area is going to be a breadth of 200 millimeters multiplied by a depth of 50 millimeters. So, uh, 200 times uh, 50, that will be equal to 10,000 square millimeters. The same case, the area of the web is going to be a breadth of 50 millimeters multiplied by a depth of 200 millimeters. Again, that's going to give us an area of 10,000 square millimeters. The centroidal distance y, that is the distance from the bottom of this web, that is LL. So for the rectangle 1, that is the first component, its centroidal distance y from LL is going to be the distance from LL all the way to its center of gravity, which is going to be 200 uh, plus 25, that is half of 50. So that's going to be 225 millimeters. For the web, the centroidal distance, centroidal distance y from LL is going to be half of its depth, which is uh, 100 millimeters. Then we have AY, that is the area multiplied by the centroidal distance. So for the first component, that is the uh, flange, the AY is going to be 2, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 2,250,000. Then for the flange, for the web I mean, that's going to be 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is 1 million. Good. Then from there, we are going to add area as well as AY. So the total of AY will be 3 million 250,000. And the total area that's going to be 20,000 square millimeters. Therefore, bar y will be given by summation of a y divided by summation of area of both fringe and the web. Now, summation of a y that is a uh, three million two hundred and fifty thousand divided by the total area of 20,000. 
So when we divide ay divide by a here, we are going to get 162.5 millimeters. And therefore, the position of the neutral axis will be, so up to this point that is 100, and we have 162, so 100 plus another 62, about that point. So that is where the neutral axis passes. Neutral axis. Therefore, um, can come and uh, light those figures here. So we have uh, 162. 0.5 millimeters and the remainder is going to be 87.5 millimeters that is a top 250 minus 162.5 so that is it that's what we are going to have so Bawai is 162.5 millimeters. Now, after locating the position of the neutral axis, the next operation will be determining the moment of inertia about the neutral axis for this T-beam section. Now, the moment of inertia that is IXX, moment of inertia about the XX axis or about the neutral axis will be given by the moment of inertia about the XX axis for the first component, that is the flange, so that is IXX1, plus the moment of inertia of the second component, which in this case is the web. So that's going to give us the total moment of inertia about the neutral axis of this T-beam section. Now, the moment of inertia about the XX axis of the first component will be given by this formula. BD cubed divided by 12 plus the area of the fringe into Y minus bar Y which should be squared. Now, y is the distance from LL to the center of gravity of the fringe. And um, so, y minus bar y is this elemental component here. That is the distance from G1 to, uh, to the neutral axis. So, this is the distance we are talking about. That is y minus bar y. Now, this is going to give us B, the breadth of the flange is 200 millimeters, its depth is 50 millimeters, which is cubed, then we divide by 12, plus the area of the flange is 200 times 50, which is 10,000 square millimeters. So that is 10,000 into Y. We got it as 225. Therefore, 225 minus um, minus bar Y 162.5. So minus 162.5 and then that is squared. So, the moment of inertia about the xx axis for the fringe is going to be 41 million 145,833.33 millimeters raised to the power of 4. Therefore, we got that. The moment of inertia about the xx axis for the web is going to be BD cubed because it is a rectangle divided by 12 plus its area 
into bar y minus y and then we square it. So this is going to be the blend of the web is 50 millimeters. Its depth is 200 millimeters. Therefore 50 times 200 cubed divide by 12 plus the area of the web is 10,000 square millimeters into bar y 162.5 minus y which is a hundred and then we square it so uh, y minus bar y is the distance uh, between g2 and the neutral axis that is y uh, that is bar y minus y so the moment of inertia about the x x axis of the web will be equal to 72 million 395,833.33 millimeters raised to the power of 4 so that is ixx2 therefore the moment of inertia of the whole component will be i x x1 plus i x x2 so when we add these two values we are going to have a total of 113 million 541,666.66 millimeters raised to the power of 4 therefore that is the moment of inertia of this uh, T-beam section. Now, after calculating or determining the moment of inertia, the next thing is to calculate the shear stresses. Now, we are going to begin with shear stress distribution, shear stress distribution in the flange, shear stress distribution in the flange. And the shear stress distribution in the fridge is the shear stress distribution just at the junction of the flange and the web. So this junction of this fridge and this web. Now, the shear stress will be given by S A bar Y divided by i b where s is the shear force of 100 kilonewtons a is the area of the flange bar y is the distance between the center of gravity of the flange and the neutral axis i is the moment of inertia and b is the breadth of the flange therefore this is going to be a hundred kilonewtons we can convert that uh, to newtons because the dimensions are given in millimeters so instead of converting millimeters to meters let's convert a uh, shear force from kilonewtons to newtons so that's going to be a hundred thousand since one kilonewton is equivalent to a thousand newtons multiplied by the area of the flange is 10,000 so we have 10,000 times bar y that is the distance from g1 to the neutral axis that can be given by 87.5 minus 25 that is half 
of the depth. So we got 87.5 minus 25. And then we are going to divide this by the moment of inertia, which we got it here. That is 113,541,666.66 times the breadth of the flange, 200 millimeters. So we multiply that by 200 millimeters. And this is going to give us a shear stress of 2.7523 newtons per square millimeters. Therefore, that is the shear stress at the that is the, the shear stress distribution in the flange just at the junction of the flange and the web. Good. From there, we go to shear stress distribution in the web. Therefore, we have shear stress distribution. Shear stress distribution in the web. Now, at the junction of the web and the flange, the shear stress is going to increase abruptly from 2.7523 to 2.7523 multiplied by the breadth of the flange divided by the breadth of the web. Remember, at the junction, there is the first shearing stress which increases abruptly from that value to another value. And we are going to show that clearly on the shear stress distribution diagram. Therefore, this is going to be 2 point seven five two three multiplied by the blend of the fringe which is two hundred divided by the blend of the web which is fifty and this is going to give us a shear stress of eleven newtons per square millimeters. So that is the shear stress distribution in the web. Now we are remaining with the maximum shearing stress. And we know very well that the maximum shearing stress usually occurs at the neutral axis. Now, for us to get the maximum shearing stress, we are going to use the same, same formula. And in this case, we are going to have maximum shearing stress being equal to S A bar Y divided by I B that is in this case small b the reason being the maximum bending moment is occurring at the neutral axis and the neutral axis is passing uh, at the web now A bar Y will be given by the moment of area of the flange about the neutral axis plus the moment of area of the web about the neutral axis. Clear? So A bar Y is equals to moment of area moment of area about the neutral axis in the fringe 
plus the moment of area of the web about the neutral axis. Now, starting with the fringe, moment of area in the fringe about the neutral axis. That is A bar Y in the fringe. That will be given by area of the fringe, which is 200 multiplied by 50 times bar Y is the distance between G1 and the neutral axis, which is 87.5 minus 25. That is half the depth of the fringe. Therefore, that is uh, 87.5 minus 25. Minus 25. And this is going to give us 6. 25,000 millimeters raised to the power of 3. So that is in the fridge. In the web, A bar Y will be given by the area of the web is a breadth of 50 times a depth of 200 times bar y for the web will be the distance from the center of gravity of this beam section from the junction of the fringe and web up to the neutral axis. Now, this depth of this section of the web will be 87.5 minus 50 therefore that is going to be 37.5 so we have 37.5 that 7.5 that is the depth of this section of the beam therefore the distance from the neutral axis to the center of gravity of this section will be half of this 37.5. And therefore, you have area of the web 50 times 200 times its bar y 37.5 divided by 2. And this is going to give us 35,000. 156.25 millimeters raised to the power of 3. So the total A bar y, remember we are adding uh, the moment of area about the neutral axis in the fringe plus the moment of area of the web about the neutral axis. So we are adding these two values. Therefore, the Summation of A by Y is going to be 625,000, that is for the fringe, plus 35,156.25, that is for the web. And that's going to give us a total of 660,000. 156.25 millimeters raised to the power of 3. Now, back to our formula so that we get the maximum shearing stress. So, the maximum shear stress will be given by a shear force of 100 kilonewtons converted to newtons, that is times 100,000, times A bar Y, total A bar Y, that is a 660,156.25 divide this by the moment of inertia about the x-axis we got it here 
113 million 541,666.66 times the breadth of the web which is 50 millimeters and therefore the maximum shearing stress will be equal to 11.628 newtons per square millimeters good therefore ladies and gentlemen we now have a uh, the three shearing stress that we require for us to plot uh, or to sketch the shear stress distribution diagram for this t beam section we got the shear stress distribution in the fringe we also have the shear stress distribution in the web and we have the maximum shearing stress so with those these stresses we can now comfortably plot the shear stress distribution diagram now um the shear stress distribution diagram we are going to plot it like this so we are going to have a straight vertical line we have the junction then we have the neutral axis the shear stress here is zero and then the shear stress <clears throat> at the junction that is the shear stress in the fringe at the junction of fringe and web is 2.7523 therefore we are going from this uh, vertical straight line we are going to move 2.7523 units assuming he is at that point and then this is a zero so we join the two points with a smooth curve then that stress of 2.7523 increases abruptly to 11 newtons per square millimeters therefore from uh, this or is, uh, this vertical straight line again we move 11 units 11 units let me gaze that point so we are joining those two points with a straight line then the maximum shearing stress occurring at the neutral axis 11.628 uh, so if from that point we have 11 so we're just moving some few points ahead of 0 0.628 so assuming is that point we join again those two points with a smooth curve and then the shear stress at the bottom edge is zero so we are going to join this point to this one again with a smooth curve as well very good so we have uh, this point we have two point seven five two three rounding off to two decimal primes we got it as two point seven five then from this point all the way to this point here we got 11 units 11 units very good then the maximum shearing stress is 11.628 units from this vertical line Good, and we are done. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we plot or sketch a shear stress distribution diagram for a T beam section of a beam. T beam section. You can shade it off so that our diagram.
becomes clear and clear. So thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe for us. Give us likes, comments, and we are going to appreciate. Thank you for watching our video. Let's meet in another lesson for another hectic sum. <laughs>